Hello everyone, this is Sammy with Photofrost and today I want to show you guys a small tutorial on how to use the Silhouette Studio software. So first we're going to go ahead and click on our uh, Silhouette Studio and go ahead and let it load up. Alright, here we are on our main page. Well, first thing I'd like to go ahead and say is that um, if anybody has never used it before, let me clarify that I am showing you guys a tutorial today of the Silhouette Studio software used with our particular icing sheets, which are 8.5 by 11 and actually have a margin for the rollers on the on the Silhouette Cameo and Silhouette Portraits to be used with the uh, with both machines and not have any issues of having to worry about using a a mat or any other uh, sort of mat to load the the icing sheets in. So okay, let me first of all show you guys what settings I like to do for my uh, page my page settings, which is eight and a half by ten point eight eight seven five, and it comes out to be custom. So when you first get your program open, for most of you, it'll be set up with letter eight and a half by eleven. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and change this to 8.5 by 10.875. And the whole reason for that is that you this makes sure that you don't have any issues with the page falling out of the machine when it's uh, registering the, the marks for your printing cuts. And then our cutting mat, which will set to portrait for the 8.5 by 11 sheet and you're actually not going to use the mat but we're just doing that so that we get the full use of our icing sheet because without the, without the mat, here I'll show you, if you click to none you'll see that it actually takes our cutting line, uh, takes quite a bit away from our, our sheet so that's why I go ahead and, and trick it or just make it assume that we are using a mat. Alright, now our next thing is to come up here and set our registration marks and for our style we are using the cameo or the portrait so we want to use type 1 there you go and now we'll go ahead and bring in an image in so we'll go either or here to file and open or you can just click on the folder right here uh, I've got a small example for you guys I'm gonna use my cartoon horses Here they are. And since it went ahead and opened into a new page, we have our page settings at 8.5 by 10.875. Show the cut border with our portrait cutting mat. And once again, set our registration marks to type 1. Here we go. Now we are ready to go ahead and make some cut lines for our image images. What I like to do is zoom in so that we can see what exactly we're doing and what we're working around. So now we're ready to go ahead and create some cut lines for these little horses. So we go over here to this icon where it says open the trace window. And we'll go ahead and click on select trace area. And now it gives us this cursor. And what we're going to do is we're going to left click on our mouse and hold down and highlight the characters. You see, and that's pretty much the idea of where anything that's in yellow, that's what it will cut. So we don't want it cutting into the actual image. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our filters. We're going to check off high pass filter and check low pass filter, and we're going to raise our threshold so that we can start getting the edges of the characters. So here we go. I say we should try somewhere around 70. There we go. And we'll take our scale down to 4. You see how we still need to go a little higher because it's actually cutting into the hair and the tail. So we'll take it somewhere around maybe 80. A little more. There we go. So it looks like 86 is what's going to work. And don't worry about these little parts right here because we're not actually trying to cut uh, 
we're not actually going to trace the inside for now we're just going to do an outer edge so now that we have it pretty much where we want it we'll go ahead and click on trace oh sorry what I meant to say is we're going to go ahead and click on trace outer edge and there you go there's our actual cut lines they're pretty hard to see because they're real close to the image which is uh, what we're shooting for here so I'll pull the image away so you can see and there's your actual cut lines now to put these back together all you gotta do is just click back and it'll put them right back together now to move them as a whole we want to go ahead and left click with our mouse and highlight both the cut lines and the horses the characters and then we have them in two but we, what we need to do now is go ahead and right click and group our image with our marks I mean our cut lines and there we go now we have them connected and uh, I'll show you another tool we have here which is our uh, knife what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, click on knife and here's our selections we can do straight poly curve or freehand so what I like to do just so that we can go ahead and uh, cut these two or divide them so that we can move them freely is we'll use a uh, straight for now and I'll just go right here and make a straight cut between there we go make sure you click back onto your cursor and there we go now we have a rent two horses freely free from each other all right now we can uh, can show you of course uh, the cool thing about it is it's pretty straightforward the silhouette studio how we can size up or down our images Just for this example I think we'll, we'll make them uh, I don't know somewhere around two inch so there we go and if you wanted to do it more specific you go up here to this uh, icon which says open the scale window and that we're clicked on our image we can go ahead and keep it in lock, lock aspect ratio because if you don't then it'll start distorting the actual image so for this example we'll make this one uh, uh, maybe mess with our height two and a half inches so there you go and this is a good size of course for decent sized cookies or if you need to do it any smaller you can also make them for cake pops or whatever else that you have in mind See, so now that we have that established we'll go ahead and show you how you can duplicate and you can right click on your once you grab your image you can right click and hit duplicate and that would take you quite a while but I'll show you a faster way of doing this let me go ahead and delete this so we'll go ahead and click on our character and we'll go up here to our replicate window open the replicate window now that we've clicked on that we can go ahead and start duplicating to the right and there we go. It seems like we might, we just might be able to fit one more. We'll go ahead and bring these guys in. There we go. Let's go ahead and highlight all of them, all of the characters and images. And we'll go to our align window. And now that we have them all grabbed, we'll go ahead and hit align top and space horizontally. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and uh, right click on our mouse and click on group. And you could do the same. I mean, if, if this is uh, easier, you can also just use, like I said earlier, the duplicate button and do one at a time. And now, once you'd have your whole page filled, which we can do real quick, I'll show you. There we go. Let me go ahead and make some more of these. All right. Now we can actually, when we're ready, once we have everything how we want it, we can go ahead and send it to the printer. You click on this button right here, and it shows whatever printer that you have. Um, I like to go to my preferences once I have clicked or chosen my uh, printer and I like to mess with the settings so media type plain paper which is a good setting for our icing sheets and the print quality I like to put at high and 
that's about it. Make sure that you have the right size paper, 8.5 by 11, and click OK. And then you would print. And then once you're done printing, you would go ahead and take your actual icing sheet, load it into your Cameo or Portrait, whichever one, and click over and hover over here to the Send to Silhouette. And then once you had your sheet loaded in with the top square on the top left corner, you would click on Start. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Um, if any of you guys have any more questions, please feel free to contact me at pfintl at centurylink.net or at sam, sammy at photofrost.com. Thank you guys.